What's up, ladies and gentlemen? What's up? News of the week. You can fast every day. And if your body type is not gargantuan, you'll be fine. <laughs> there was data on there's been data on that for a while. And now that I'm actually living that way, I feel fine. Like I can eat starting at four. Like I don't need anything from the time I wake up till four. Mm-hmm. I barely feel hungry anymore. The only times I feel hungry is like psychologically. Like I hear someone making food or like I smell it or something. Yeah. Other than that, bro, I'm fucking chilling. Fire. It's so mm. weird. I feel way less inflammation in mm. my body. Like I, I feel like I'm recovering better. That's good, man. Bizarre. Here's the thing. I actually want to know your two cents on this. Okay. Because okay. I actually I had this conversation with Mackenzie <laughs> on the podcast. Because Mackenzie posted on her story. I'm good. Okay. Her, her, Mackenzie posted on her story like a couple months ago, and it was of a picture of. Oh, I, huh? I think we talked about this. Oh, I think we did. It's a picture on a vending. It's like a little. Thing attached to the vending machine that said oh, yeah. uh, something along the lines of be mindful of what you're putting in your body or something like count your calories just mm. count your calories or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh and she posted on her story and she was like fuck this like take that shit down mm. like don't have that on there and my immediate reaction was like that doesn't make any sense because you know what percent of the population is obese and what percent of the population dies because of heart disease and what what percent of those deaths come from overeating? And it's like, that's a high fucking percentage, but there's also a very large amount of people, very large number of, especially young women that die from psychological disorders like anorexia. Mm. And where do you reconcile those two things? So where do I reconcile? Like where I draw the line? I'm yeah, kind of like, okay, so what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that there should just be no sign? Do I'm definitely f- on the side that like, Having a side is a good thing. Yeah. But, like, I also feel like, I mean, it, because I think it makes people aware of, like, it's it's just drawing attention to an issue. And it's, it's kind of like a disclaimer yeah. that you may not want to have this, right? So I just, I just watched this veganism video that said uh, it was a debate between, I think, uh, a food nutritionist and a vegan – and they said, should supermarkets put labels on their food that like, oh, this is cruelty free, this is non cruelty mm. or whatever, right? And like they, they pretty much debated on the topic and like, you know, just generally speaking. And like what it brought, I think it is important to have those kind of issues labeled um, because it, it makes people more understanding of what they're putting into their body. Mm-hmm. And especially with that kind of case, like where it's coming from, right? And it's like, because those things have an effect on you as an individual. And not only that, but they have an effect on the world outside of you, right? Because everything that we do is consumption, right? Right. Like this podcast room with these cameras, right? Like we're affecting something else. And uh, I think, I think when you take food, for example, when you are putting food into your body, a lot of people just feel like they're eating, right? And they just feel like they need, they have the effect that they're filling their, um, or they're satisfying their appetite to no longer be hungry, but they may not understand that there's this thing called your health (laughs) and it's kind of important uh, depending on who you are, right? Because some people just don't even value their health, right? So I guess it's more like generally speaking, is this a consensus issue or is this kind of a subjective issue? Well, do you think that people that, like if there's people that don't value their health, people that just don't give a fuck, just going to gorge until they fucking are 500 pounds, do you think that they're even going to care about that kind of sign? Because here's here's my two cents. My two cents is probably not. Probably not. Right. It's like I. Same thing with smoking. Right. I also think it's like a. I I don't want this to turn into me saying bring bullying back because that's not what I'm saying. But there is a certain level of negative emotion negative emotion that you need to feel to make a change. Yeah. So if someone commenting on the fact that you've now gained so much weight that you're starting to look very unhealthy and it's probably bad for your for, for your mind, probably bad for your body, probably bad for the people around you. Like if someone commenting that is going to make you cry, should they say it or should they not say it? Well, the question is, is why, why do they feel the need to say it in the first place? It's because you're overweight. It's because it's not good for you. Some people are going to bully you for it and that's not cool. But if people are genuinely on your side, there's still a time and a place to say something that's going to hurt your feelings. That is best for you. And so it's like, a okay, well, that's one side of it. The other side is, are people going to look at that sign? Are more people going to be helped than hurt by that sign? And is it better that the sign just wasn't there to begin with? Yeah. It's like, I don't know. 
I mean, like, what are the numbers? 40% of Americans. Well, it's... Are obese, and then, like... I think it's 60. Well, no, 40% are obese, and then... Oh, like, obese. Yeah, then overweight. Obese, and then, and then 60% is overweight. Is overweight. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Um, Near 50. So. Right. It's Ooh. so bad. It's getting there. That's insane. <laughs> We're almost there, guys. Come on. <laughs> Keep eating. <laughs> Keep eating! We're almost there! But... It's hard because it's like it's like how do you even calculate how much damage it's doing and how much it's helping? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I think with stuff like that, it's it's definitely a more general kind of thing, but I think I mean I think it just depends on what the public wants. You know what I mean? And it's like to to me, it's like I get it, you know, there's multiple opinions on it, but I think one of the biggest things is having a conversation around it, right? Because it's like I mean, you'll see like the non-GMO kind of things. We've talked about this a lot, right? Like, because if if you if you're talking to me and I got a bag of Lay's versus a bag of uh, I don't know uh, carrots, uh, not even that, but like a, a bag of chips, right? And there's a non-GMO sticker on one bag oh, of the oh, chips. Oh, oh, oh. I'm choosing that other one because of the right because of the non-GMO sticker, right. right? But I think, I mean, I think we had this conversation. Like, is it really non-GMO? Or, you know, is it is it like actually or you know organic and stuff like that, right? Uh, and are the these, same thing are with whole these, grain. Because a lot of times people will just throw labels on things yeah. and it'll just be like a marketing scam. I mean, like That's there's so is. there's so many things. There's propaganda everywhere. And I think, you know, whether you don't want I mean, like you fucking look at that dairy industry, for instance. I mean, you got like happy cows, right? And then you okay, yeah. then you look at it, there's fucking yeah. cows getting their fucking fists stuck in their <laughs> anus and they're fucking jerking off bowls and then they're stealing their babies, right? Like and they're just slaw- chopping their heads off. Like, like yeah. Terrible shit, but yeah. the cow's happy, right? And it's yeah. like, yeah, this yeah. is what you're drinking, right? And it's like, it's definitely a big issue, right? Mm-hmm. And you've really just got to, you got to sift out the bullshit. But if like, to me, like if you're going to put a label on something, right? right it's got to be truthful, right? right? And it's like, when you look at the back of, I think, uh, whatever medication you're taking, and it's like, if you're pregnant, do not take this, right? right. And it's like, <laughs> It's not like a happy lady, right? Like, yeah. it's pregnant, right? Like they're saying that because it might kill your baby or right. something like that, and it actually means something. But I think you got to take the money out of like these labels. Like these labels have to be genuine, exactly, objective, logical things without any propaganda, right. Attached to them. Well, and that's the problem. And and this yeah. is where the rubber meets the road when it comes to politics, because when you get to this point, it gets political. Yeah. Because there's no way, because that's because when yeah. it comes to rules and regulations, politics is involved, period. And to me, it's a it's a matter of like, okay, where do you prioritize money, and where do you prioritize the health of the public? Yeah, it's like the that the first time I saw that was when I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast. Mm-hmm. Wish I can remember who he was talking to. It doesn't really matter. They were talking about how it's better for you to eat white rice than brown rice, and scientifically that doesn't make sense because oh. brown rice is a whole grain. And therefore, you don't digest it as quickly. It's like white rice is more of an equivalent to sugar. Brown rice is more of an equivalent to an apple in terms of the scales of how healthy it is as a carbohydrate, scientifically. But especially in the U.S., brown rice is marketed to be healthier. Mm. But in order for it to preserve its shelf life or really wherever it is, if it's not actually made like naturally on a, on a fucking farm, it has all these additives to, to, to keep the shelf shelf life longer yeah, to so the point like, where it's, it's less healthy than the white rice. And that I was like, Oh my God. I was like, what the fuck? You're just <laughs> fucked. Yeah. You see the penne and it's whole grain. You think, Oh, this yeah. is amazing. It's going to be way healthier for me. And then you realize that there's so much shit that's fucking sprinkled on it to make yeah. it last longer or to make it taste better or whatever that is infinitely worse th- for you than just yeah. digesting the glucose and having it store as a little bit more fat than it would yeah. th- of you consuming chemicals. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, I mean that's why you just you gotta you gotta go for the food that's as fresh as possible. Hundred percent. And I think I saw this perspective a long time ago. Oh, there's like four minutes left on this battery. Okay. <laughs> Five RC baby, come on now. <laughs> you ain't dying, my friend. You ain't dying. Um, but yeah, I think it was back in the, I think I told you about this perspective back in the 1950s, uh, before refrigerators were a thing, uh, and before, I think it was after world war two, this is when they learned about dur- Yeah. So during world war two, like all of, oh, what is it called? What's like, it's like astronaut food. I forget like exactly what that's called. Do you know what that's called? 
No, oh, but God, I never I forget. It. It's like um, packaged a certain way. Yeah, yeah. So it's packaged a certain way, and the oxidize. Yeah, uh, yeah. They oxidize it so it's it's long lasting food. Yeah, so yeah. when you go out on war, you could you know you could bring food with you and you still have it and it's preserved. Mm -hmm. And so kind of similar to that perspective, they learned during that time. And I'm, of course, I'm paraphrasing. I'm not an expert in this area, but they learned how to, like you said before, preserve the shelf life, right? Mm -hmm. So they can have food that's not necessarily as fresh on shelves for yeah. a longer period of time. Right. And so in addition to that, back in the 1950s, 1960s, people, they wouldn't refrigerate their food. They would go to the supermarket every single time mm -hmm. and get fresh food, right? right. And, and so this food would be imported. It would be way healthier because it's not injected with a bunch of chemicals right. and a bunch of other crap, right, right. that preserves its life. And so, uh, it, it, so not only in, in addition to that, but this guy, uh, I think, I forget his name on YouTube, but he's like very much a holistic doctor. Um, he said like when you're putting it, and now we have like things like the refrigerator, right? So when you put it in the refrigerator, not only does it, it's like all this radiation, right? It gets into the food and then it like decreases the, um, like you're not actually eating an apple, right? You're eating like a, a kind of, systematic apple if that makes sense yeah. and then you know you're chucking your pasta in the microwave that's a whole nother radiation right and it's like decreasing and you think you're eating all this food but like you're just eating a whole bunch of fake food that's made according to the system and helps people make further profits right and so it's, it's like generally speaking like you said like you don't even know what you're eating anymore and it's like probably a bunch of garbage yeah. right and it's like the labels don't even match right what you're actually eating right i mean i don't really again i'm not I have a fucking PhD. No, I don't. I don't like. I don't really know Speaking what I'm talking about. I'm just saying from personal experience, you probably don't need to eat as much as you're eating, and if something has more than seven ingredients in it, it's probably not good for you. And I'm not saying that I don't eat things with more more than seven ingredients, and I don't say that like I I just sit here perfectly yeah, generally, fasted generally. all the time. But I'm saying generally speaking. Yeah, yeah. Also, do your own research. Like, oftentimes it ends up in this isn't just with food; it's with everything. People point the finger, how the fuck do you know what you're talking about? Okay, don't listen to me. Go find someone that you yeah. trust and then take that information and do something about it. But you don't actually care about that. You're spewing bullshit because you don't like your life. You don't like your health. You don't like your mental health or your physical health or your level of spirituality or, or your relationships with your creator or your spouse or whatever. And that's where you're spewing the bullshit. I'm sorry. It just, it just uh, To me, it's like a... If you, have, it, it's the whole thing of Michael Jordan doesn't leave hate comments. It's like, why? Well, because he doesn't have, why would he leave a hate he comment? Time. He, he doesn't have the time of the day. He's like, he's, he's doing him. And plus when you're in a good spot, you don't fucking care to leave the hate comment anyways. But that's besides the point. I think it's just, to me, it's aggravating to see when people point the finger like, how do you know what you're talking about? When in reality, you don't have your shit together to even make that comment. Yeah. I think like what you were also touched on there, I forget exactly what you said, but it's, it's like who you get your advice from and who you get, who you trust. Right. Because like, I know when I see people leaving hate comments on YouTube, like I'll read them, right? Or about like just whatever video I'm watching. And most times it's just for entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like a lot of times you just, you know, you get in those kind of like polarizing discussions, whether it be like whatever, whatever industry you're in mm -hmm. and people will just go and go and go. And you'll see like 80 replies to like one comment. I'm like, Oh my God. And people going back and forth for hours and hours. And it's like <laughs> in those kind of circumstances, uh, like, like it's kind of crazy how they just spend all that time. <laughs> I guess that's very valuable to them and just being right and getting their point across. But it's like, what are you actually changing? But like my question there um, was, have you ever heard of Alex Ramosi's kind of continuum for people who he takes advice from? Yes. With yeah. The, yeah. So yes. on the low, I know on the yes, lowest yes. end of that spectrum, it's people who leave comments on Instagram, right? right. <laughs> it's, and, but people who have on, right. the, on the top of that spectrum, I forget like exactly what his levels are, but it's so someone who's been where who's, I, yeah, someone who's yeah. been where, someone who has been where he wants to be has taken people there, and Multiple in times. addition to that, has yeah. been there themselves. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, what, what did you think about that? I was gonna say like, oh, like it's such I, amazing. Yeah, no, yeah. that that's what to, that's what made me listening to that exact yeah. thing is what made me text you saying we need to start reaching out to entrepreneurs. Mm. That needs to be a big part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I reached out to a couple today. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, reaching out to. Yeah, there's. Here's a quick side note. Um. I was talking to this, oh, actually, uh, she's uh, she was at the Entrepreneurship Summit. She's like a student that ran it. Uh, you might know her. but blonde, blonde? Yeah, blonde girl. She says in Hartford, there's like this incubator kind of company where it's like similar to Alex Ramosi's kind of company. Mm -hmm. And they you sign up. I don't know if you probably have to pay, 
but they'll like assign experts to you and mentors and they'll give you advice and help on where you need to go. And I was like, shit. I want to be. I want to look into that. You know, so that would be cool. If I it mean, costs money. I'm not really down. But like, yeah, yeah, if it yeah, costs yeah. money, it, it's a little <laughs> I'm good. ridiculous. I'm good. Well, because successful entrepreneurs want to help other people. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They want to. The best advice is going to come from people that give it out for free. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, seriously. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, yeah, makes sense. You like that perspective though, of Alex Ramoli? Yeah, bro. yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like people will get mad that they don't like my advice. And it's like, okay, if I don't live the life that you want to live yeah. in any area, don't take my advice. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> like yeah, there's no simple. There's yeah. nothing. Yeah. There's nothing else to say. That's why I love Elon Musk so much. Cause he mm. never gives advice. He never gives advice and everyone idolizes him. It's like, okay, why isn't he giving advice? Because there's an understanding that he knows that you don't want to live his life. Even though you think you do, you fucking don't. Yeah, but I, don't even know I what think to say. I do. I forget who asked the question, but it was like me, you, and Tristan, and I. I think someone asked the question: Does Elon Musk actually enjoy his life? And Tristan goes, "Probably." And then I just I know what you were thinking in the background, yeah. and you just go, "No, he doesn't." Yeah, and it's like yeah, yeah, homies, homies working all the time. Yeah, bro. Uh-huh. There's a clip on the Joe Rogan podcast that I play through my head all the fucking time. And Elon doesn't even know that. I, I don't even think he realizes how powerful it was when he said that. But Joe was talking about basically the material part of having that that much fucking money. And he was like, and Elon sounded so grave in his response. And he was like, you know, a lot of times people think that billionaires are super happy. But if you actually spend a day in their shoes, you realize they're not very happy. Not very happy at all. And he was talking about how he was in the process of basically selling all of his stuff and getting rid of everything and just doing a bunch of extreme things, like not knowing really how to handle having all of this money and access to whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want it. And it's also ironic to look at him and think, okay, you think you want that. You think you want the hundreds of billions of dollars. Okay, well then answer this. If you actually had what it took, would you actually live that lifestyle? Think about it this way. Like, Elon Musk still works all the time, flat out. Why? Because he needs more money? No. Obviously not. If you even if he even had 1% of what he has now, he'd be set for generations. It's not about having more money and doing more things and, you know, chilling on the beach with a fucking margarita in your hand. Because if that's what it was about, he'd have an exit real fast and live the rest of his life on the beach with a margarita. But it's not that way. And it's for two reasons. One, because his personality is not, it, it's not a multi-piece set suit that you can just wear the jacket and have his discipline and IQ and level of drive. No, no, no. What comes with that is you continue to work. You have shady relationships. You don't take care of your physical health. There's a bunch of negative side effects that come with it because it's a onesie to have that personality. But two, it's because you think that you want that life. Like you look at the margarita on the beach and you think that that's what you want. Not realizing is... I, okay, Jordan Pearson talks about it. How many margaritas on the beach are you going to have until your vacation's not fun anymore? Like, you idolize this life of being able to tell everyone to fuck off and do nothing, but you don't realize that if you actually had that, if you had a permanent vacation, you wouldn't fucking enjoy your life because that's not what gives you meaning. What gives you meaning is finding things meaningful that you do that requires hard work and discipline and effort. That's, I mean, that's the things that you find meaningful. And it's obvious. Everybody knows that. Yet we still put this thing on, on a pedestal of, of the glory days when you retire and can kick back. It's like, how long are you going to kick back for b- before you figure out that that's not what you actually want? Why can't you download the wisdom now to understand that that's not what you should pursue? And the undertone is, is you won't quit your job that you hate because you're stuck in this fucking rat race, rat race path that's that's geared towards the glory days when you already know. Like, it's it's the existential question: why why do people not do what they know they should do, even though they know they have one life and they know that we're all gonna die one day? Again, I don't know, but to me, it's a I don't know. It, it, like talking to you about this is like. You can shut your ears off because you know all this, but it's like a no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just listening. No, I know, but I'm yeah. saying it's like, it just, like obviously it doesn't apply to you because you're not no. living that life. But like, no, no, I, mean, I know. Like, what are you supposed to do? Well, 
Well, I think, I mean, yeah, I think the biggest thing is I think the biggest thing, and th this is the example that came to mind, because, I mean, Alex Ramosi said, you know, you could give someone a million dollars. You give it a million dollar business. You could buy it, right? Just give it to you, or not saying you, yeah. but it's just some random Joe Schmo off the street, right? Compared to the past individual that owned that million dollar business, and they would lose it all. Mm -hmm. Because they don't know how to handle mm -hmm. the a million dollar business. Right. They don't have the habits, the the traits, the characteristics yeah. that will allow them to get to that point. And so with that, I think it's it's that same kind of understanding of knowing what the truth is, right? Because you look at someone like Elon Musk, right? And you think you want to be this per, and this is kind of like on a different kind of uh, segment from what you were saying exactly, but you think you want to be the CEO that is of multiple companies, right. huge companies, like, Literally. oh my God, like PayPal, SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, like Twitter, like X, whatever. Like homie is, I mean, obviously he's, he's one person and he's not, he's probably the <laughs> board insane. on all these other companies, but it's just yeah. like, it's, and he's got other things too, like a personal life, social life and kids. like <laughs> kids, right? Like things like that wife. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know his whole personal situation, like family, right? It's like things like that. And it's like you, yeah, if you were put in a spot right now, you would have, you would be in a shit storm of what is going on. Cause not only is he probably extremely stressed out and stressed about his stress, which yeah. keeps him up at night, yeah. but also he knows how to handle it to the best of his ability, but you have no idea how to handle it, right? But the reason, and, and this is kind of like a cool segue when I just thought about, the reason why he does that is because he has such a deep purpose in what he's doing, right? right? And that's why he does what he does, right. right? And it's like, if you can, if you have a why, you could bear anyhow, right? And it's like, especially a man like Elon Musk, my God, like he's doing so much. And so I think for, you know, drawing it back to the question on hand, I think for someone that's in that kind of spot, it's just like we, we talked about this a while ago and it's like, you know, just doing away with the stereotype, understanding that's not the truth and that's not what you want. And it's like people will, I mean, you can, you can try it for yourself. I mean, you most likely have gotten, we both, I mean, you more so, but have gotten a taste of that kind of glamour, fam, famous kind of lifestyle. And it's like, we're so conditioned in that way, and we we think that's what we want. But at the end of the day, sitting out in the forest for forty minutes, as compared to sitting right. on social media, glamorizing about how the much your how awesome you are, is there's going to be two different effects there, and most likely you're going to choose the forest, right? And especially if you're in a state where you're not, you don't feel disconnected from nature, right? And it's like that. That to me is like the perfect distinction because sometimes I'll be out in nature and I'll be like, I feel separate and I don't feel mm -hmm. connected. I feel like when I sit down on the ground, I'm like, Ugh, right? <laughs> but then I sit down for a while mm -hmm. and I feel connected. Right. As opposed to I get on social media, right? It's like that dopamine fix. I get on for a little bit and after a while, I feel like shit. <laughs> so, I mean, so, obviously that's not, the, that's not gonna be the case for everyone, but it's yeah. like that kind of distinction of understanding what the truth is. So weird. why do you think that there's that foggy feeling? You know when you, like, you're on there for like over a half hour and you're just scrolling, mm. you know that foggy feeling like you sit on your phone. You're like, I feel nothing. Like it turns me into like a nihilist. Yeah, I do. It's well, the I just, weirdest thing. Well, so it's so interesting because Alex Ramosi was also talking about this. He says the people that are able to get themselves back on track in the shortest amount of time mm -hmm. are the people that are usually the most successful. Right. Because for you and I, we'll right. get on social media. Uh, for like 15, 20 minutes maybe, yeah. and we'll be like, the fuck am I doing, right? right? But that might be, and, and we would make the decision to get back uh, to doing what we should be doing. Right. But for some people, that might take weeks. That might take months. <laughs> that might take <laughs> That's crazy. maybe even a year, right? I was so expecting you to say we're weeks. <laughs> we're, t we're saying yeah. we're making choices right. sooner and quicker than people are, than, than other people are, right? So our choices are taking 
so essentially we're able to make way more choices in a shorter amount of time right. than they are. Right. And so on that basis, we're able to whatever kind of continuum you're, you're on, right. You're making way more progress than that other individual 100%. that has a shorter amount of habits. And so it's like, I think that kind of fog is just, it's just, it's just that kind of like, oh, it's kind of, it's really scary when you think about it. Cause like you're just, you're an autopilot and you're so stuck in a virtual world. It's the craziest. It shit. really is. It is the craziest fucking shit. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't. Do you get caught in those states often or no? What do you mean? Like the kind of. Like scrolling? Yeah. Not really. Yeah. I mean, like, when I, not, not hours. When I go, time. when I go to like post, that's when it gets yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, Because like, that's like, that's the marker of like the end of my night. <laughs> like it's like the it's last It's so bad day. at the end of the night. And I'm like. <laughs> It's like falling asleep with my dick well, in my hand. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like when I'm edit, like when I'm editing, and I, I open up Instagram for mm-hmm. the first time all day, like after 7 p.m. Yeah. After every single, I'm like, ah, oh, and that that kind of temptation yeah. to want to take a break is like. I just think way I, more I, I just think for me, I'm too extreme. Where like, I just need my phone needs to be off. No, it's good, man. And I, I keep it there in case it rings or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like. I can't, I refuse, if I know, if I open up Instagram or TikTok, it's fucked. It's over. It's over. <laughs> and sometimes when it does happen, I just accept it. I'm like, well, I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> I'm just like, that's it. I'm going to wait until I hate myself or until I see one of those clips <laughs> that's like so the true. axe yeah. falling on the puff and the like, yeah, yeah. huge thing. And then it cuts to the scene of, what are you doing with yeah, your I life? Love those. I and love I'm like, those. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Slam it. I'm like, get back to work. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's so true. <laughs> but some of those actually work for me. I'm like, no, dude. Yeah. They work for me. You're fucking right. You're fucking right. It's, oh, God. There's this one guy. He's like talking in like a, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like he talks in like a vignette, right? He's kind of like a Justin Bieber kind of hairstyle. Okay. And, you would definitely know if you saw him. He's just, he's like talking right to the camera. And I was like, I was like, it was after work. It was like 520 after like, not a brutal day, but it was like usually yeah, yeah. after res life. I'm like, I'm like drooling on my couch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like, like, like the lights are off in my room and I'm just like, oh. I'm like, Fucking time. Like, you time. know, and it was just like it's done. And obviously that's like you know fiction yeah, in the yeah. story, but it's like you know those are, those videos really can go a long way. <sighs> um, yeah, and they do. They really do. So. I just yeah, I don't know. It's kind of crazy to think about your impact though. I think we talked about it one time, like how like we just have such a much how we have such a bigger impact than we realize. Literally, and it's like because you know some of our stuff may not get the most attention or like the mm-hmm. most likes, but it's like in your society, yeah. yeah yeah, or it's like not reaching that metric, that standard. That's like, oh yeah, she's actually doing really good. Like, I mean, it is dick. It's doing better over time, right? But it's like, mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy because like, if you, I mean, you're, it's your quote, right? It's like, or it's like you're one person away from of impacting them. Or literally, there's actually Rachel showed me this text, and a part of it felt really nice because my ego and significance. But the other part was really cool. It was like, mm-hmm. she showed me this text where her cousin, um. He she's dating a guy that goes to Central, oh, sure. and I don't I don't I don't know who's uh, I don't know his name or anything okay. like, but I don't I never even seen his face before, but then um, somehow we got thrown into the mix, um, and Rachel's cousin sent Rachel a screenshot of her conversation with her boyfriend. Are you following? Conversation between Rachel's cousin and her boyfriend. Okay, and her boyfriend said he was like, oh yeah, I've I've I've, I've uh, I've heard of Jason before. Like he, he has a podcast and like a pretty decent following does like mindset, mental health stuff. Wow. And I was thinking, I was like, and I've never met that kid before. And that's like, that's never happened yeah, yeah, before. Yeah. We're like, I'm not fucking saying I'm paparazzi no, or, no, no, no. Yeah. or putting us on a pedestal. But I, what I am saying is like, Oh, like, like word gets out, word gets out, you know, even if it's locally, even if it's, even if it's just me coming back, like this is one of the biggest things that I, that I saw like, and, this, this is something that made me feel really good is there was a particular RA last year where I, the first couple weeks of, um, of training in the winter, I was, I, the only time I had to go was like five in the morning. Cause it, we had to go, had to go come back. It's like the only time I can go to the gym is five in the morning. And when I would be coming back, they would all be waking up. Um, and then I passed her once or twice and she was like, where, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I just got back from the gym. And she was like, Oh shit. And she had told me a couple weeks later that it got her to working out. And like she, cause she just knew she was, she should have done it. And like that. Yeah. And it was like a, me just existing squashed excuses for her. Mm. And so 
doing yeah. yourself a favor. And then her boyfriend started working out with her, and then they started they started like going to the gym together, and he's been a lot better. But yeah, it's like just doing good by yourself does so much better for other people. Oh, yeah. And she told me about that. Imagine how many people you impact Joe. that don't tell you. That's what I'm Way more people won't tell you than they will. Yeah. Especially I, if it's embarrassing uh, and little. I know. Because it's like... I think that's so interesting, too. Because I, I can't count the amount of times, just even me, like mm-hmm. where I've noticed something nice about a person, yeah. and I just haven't said anything, right? Or, Maybe because it's like... <laughs> It's just not, it doesn't make sense for the conversation we're right. in. Or just because I don't really, like, maybe because of an insecurity of mine, right? right? Or something along those lines. Right, right, right. Um, because I've definitely been in that spot, and it happens frequently. Um, right, like, how often do you feel like you should tell someone that they've, they're they motivating you because you feel inadequate yeah, by their level exactly, of discipline? Exactly, right? And it's like, I, I mean, I'm not trying to put us up on a pedestal or anything like that, but it's just, like, really, really interesting to think about. Because, I mean, we don't know. We really don't know. But if I had to guess, I'm sure... Maybe that like, you know, our, our impact is a lot bigger than we realize, you know? And it's like, I would, I would love to look at a spreadsheet of, of just, just like, you know, the people like, cause right. it would motivate me so much, you know, and just kind of like feel like the content when we're making is some, sometimes like, of course, like, I don't want to say pointless, but like, you know, it's not reaching the amount of people I right. want it to reach. And it's like not making the impact, but it actually is because it's like course. someone, someone that looks at a TikTok video, you saved it uh, right. from four months ago and then looks back at it in their memories, right? And then that motivates them today to yeah. go do something. And so, it's like, it's that just keeping that in mind is I think is really important for us moving forward. And then just like, especially because the things we're going to do, the things we are doing. And it's like, I mean, I mean, yeah, I think people, People not only, I mean, our business is definitely not booming <laughs> by, by any means, right? But right. people will look at, like, something that we've, I mean, we've developed, like, so many legitimate things from the ground up. Literally. Um, and it's, obviously, we're not at a point, like, where it's, like, but, um, like, meaning, you know, 100% successful, mm. um, nor will it be, but uh, definitely, we'll definitely get to that point, for sure. Uh, someone over there? Yeah, someone was just, like, peeking in. Uh. Um, but, yeah, yeah, so, just, yeah, yeah, just important to keep in mind, you know, of course. Forward. And also to keep in mind that, like, don't fucking put it... Because, like, people... I've seen people do that. Like, they put us on a pedestal oh, because... Yeah, no, dude. Because we started a business and stuff, and it seems so cool. It's like, dude, you do not know what the everydayness yeah. of it's like. You don't. It's, it's kind of garbage. It's kind of garbage. Like... Yeah. But I love it. We're, e- <laughs> we're in the eating shit phase, and yeah, it's yeah. cute to it's, talk it's about it. It's kind of fun, though. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's fun when you acknowledge that it's fun, but in but it... But it's a lot of work. Kind yeah. of shit. But I can only imagine if I wasn't passionate about what I was doing. Of course. Like, like you know, Mike, his boat business. Oh, yeah. He hates it. Like, he, said, he says, like, dude, it's a grind. And he's just like, oh, God. He's like, I just don't like cleaning boats. And he's just like, he's like, my partner is the type of guy to, you know, go and clean boats all day just because that's how he is. You know, he's like, mm-hmm. I'm very, but he's like, dude, I could not be doing this for a living. Like he wants to start a business, but he knows this isn't the business he wants to do. Um, and it's, it's like a really successful business so far, but he's yeah. like, you know, he's looking to, uh, I don't know if he's looking to sell the business or I don't know, just kind of put it that's to the cool. side, but still it's just like, uh, you know, I can, oh God, just being, being in a business, like imagine you being in an accounting business, being a freelance accountant. Cal. I'm not <laughs> lying to you when I say this. <laughs> you would see me hanging from the ceiling. There is little things in life that I find more <laughs> hatred oh, for, odd. disenjoyable, <laughs> aggravating, just pure wretchedness in my heart than accounting. I don't know why, dude. <laughs> there's there's something deeper to it <laughs> for my passionate this taste for fucking accounting. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Very happy. Very happy you said that. I don't know why. Oh, God. It's so funny. I'm like, I think what's going to happen is we're going to reach a point where, like, you would see me hanging from this. You would, bro. I, I would kill myself. So, something, something about it. I'm going to be, I'm going to have to hire people <laughs> so fast for accounting. Like, once oh, things yeah. start to pick oh, yeah. up, bro, it's going to. Oh. I'll, I'll pitch it's going to be the fastest yeah. hire ever. Someone yeah. to do our books. Yeah. I was also talking about today. My, one of my friends called me because he had some relationship issues. And uh, just realizing, like, I don't know. Like, Rachel and I don't, we just don't have problems. Like, I don't know. 
it's like, dude, like if you're actually invested yeah, in somebody, yeah. if you're invested in somebody oh. and you're invested in yourself, yeah. smooth fucking would you, sailing. Would you mind me saying from my perspective what it was like before? No, go ahead. Because, okay. dude, like I think the time we went to the golf course together versus seeing you during Halloween. Remember when we looked like we played that round of golf and I got fucking smacked? Um, it was like, <laughs> it was, uh, like Rachel was your caddy that day. You know, at West Woods. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think, for, like, when I saw that Rachel yes. versus Halloween Rachel, mm-hmm. right? I mean, sure, like, like I wasn't 100%, like, 100% like talking to her or things like that, right? right. But and, like just seeing the way you guys interacted, it was like happened and because before i mean i just it just seemed like there was something was missing of course and uh it's called me investing <laughs> me trying <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's like it, it's, it's not to say like anything on her at all but like yeah i mean it was on you and i think just that difference of like you said investing and really just N- treating it as a priority as opposed to putting the business as a priority first Bro, and there or are, whatever else, Right, you know? and there are plenty of things that she has probably fixed that I just can't, I don't have the IQ to realize that she <sighs> fixed, but it all came from me taking the initiative to actually decide to invest. And this is one of the conversations I had today. I, with my personality, and a lot of people can relate to this, With my personality, I can psych myself into believing whatever the fuck I want to believe. I can make up my mind that I want to get out of a relationship, self-sabotage, and give myself reasons on why it's right, and nobody could ever convince me wrong. And it all just comes from a decision. From myself. Within. And that's why it's the most important to have a truthful and honest conversation with you. Yourself. By yourself. How do you feel when you live this life with or without this person? Is your life better or worse? Look at it objectively and then answer the question, why am I doing what I'm doing? What are the reasons? What are the motivations? Why? Who gave me this idea that I should think X, Y, and Z? Think about it. And the only person that's going to tell you the truth is you because you're the only one that has access to it. Because even you couldn't tell me that I was wrong. And that's what makes me know for a fact that I'm sucking myself into some weird state where grass is greener syndrome or I'm going to trick myself into believing something or trick myself into thinking that I could have, you know, a one night stand because it's okay because of X, Y, and Z and like just leading myself into believing anything that I make right. Now, there's probably a breaking point of like, well, I can just kill people because I'll make it right in my head. But maybe, I don't know. Like, I'm not going to obviously, but yeah, I will. But like, what I'm getting at is some of us out there, especially if you're like a stubborn personality, like if you have a stubborn personality, you have to know that your deadliest weapon is your ability to influence yourself and other people because you're going to make things right because you want them to be right. You're going to tell yourself and other people, I meant to be with this person and decide that that's how it's supposed to be. And you're going to fuck yourself up because you're going to force relationships out of your life and you're going to force relationships into your life because you're going to make up in your mind a million different reasons on why it is that way when the reality is facing you and telling you that's not the truth. But the problem is, is you are typically the only person that can give yourself the honest truth, the raw truth, the real fucking truth. And the only way you're going to know that is if you're honest with yourself and no one else can give it to you but you. And so it's a gift and a curse because I can influence the fuck out of other people and I can get them to believe whatever the fuck I want them to believe, usually, especially if they're naive. But well, you're not, that, that thing's, you're the opposite of naive when it comes to me. Like, you know so much about no, me. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, I'm saying like, no, 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 I'm saying like, because both times, like, I mean, both, no, no. Because both times you told me about the times you broke up. Yeah. It made sense. I'm like, oh shit, like that. Okay, like that checks out. You know? more, but, yeah. but it's like, I think uh, it's just yeah. I mean, just your ability to. I think because sometimes it's really so, like what I'm thinking about is like yeah, you know the truth, but you don't at the same time too. 
And that's why I think asking your, yourself questions is such a big thing. And, like, you just got to keep digging. You just got to keep digging. You're not going to find it right away either um, because, you know, self-inquiry really is the best thing. And that's why a lot of times, like, it's like the weirdest thing. Like, when I meditate or I sleep, that's when I have some of the best thoughts. Of course. But I forget to write them down. <laughs> so, <laughs> but sorry, I mean, like, definitely write it down. But, like, you know, anyways, it's like when you're in that kind of dormant state or if you're kind of, you know, just in a, in a clear thought you're not emotional and you're not mm-hmm. kind of you're taking your feelings into consideration, but you're not acting according to those right. feelings. And so I think definitely when you ask yourself those questions and you kind of walk through that process, you can begin to understand that what you're doing is, is probably not the thing you should be doing. And it really does go a long way because like you said, you're the only one that knows your preferences. You're the only one that knows where you want to be. Right. And so it's like some people may want to stay in higher ed. Mm-hmm. I know for sure as hell I don't want to stay in higher ed, right? right. But, like, your parent, your mom, you know, and, or your parent, your mom, <laughs> same thing. Um, <laughs> listen, I'm going to be available from 3 to 7.30, but I'm going to be uh, – <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bust <laughs> make this more complicated than it has to be, right? So, you know, your, whether it be your parent, your friend, or something like that may tell you what you want, right? But yeah. you're the only one that really knows what you want. And I think sometimes people haven't done the research – within to really understand that and i think of course bro it's it's really a process of just doing more and developing an understanding of what you're passionate about and developing kind of that that autonomy as an individual to critically think yeah. away from being dependent on others because i can tell you like for instance i think we were walking into I'm just so used to you when it comes to a business setting to just making all the contacts, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm just so used to you talking about anything. Mm-hmm. And I think we were walking in and you were like, all right, go ask that guy about whatever. And I was like, you want me to go ask that guy? I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, of course I'm going to go do that shit. Like, I was like, oh, you're not going to go do it, Dad? Like, uh, <laughs> See, it's so weird because uh, right? you, you say stuff like this often. I don't realize... Make sure you help me understand, like, cause, yeah. like I don't want to come across that. No, way. no, no, and it's not even. Like, I'm just oh, that, that's okay. the habit. I'm just so used to that, okay. right? Like, I'm, I'm used to like, oh, Jason's got this figured out. Like, yeah. he's just laid out. The, like, it's yeah. it's the same thing of like, if my boss does everything for me, I'm not learning the task mm-hmm. of what to do, right? right? And it's like it's not parallel with that, but it's like I'm I'm not used to within a business setting, right? Reaching out and doing all these things, but like within my other job, that's all I do. Like oh, yeah. that's, that's all. I, that's yeah. all I do. Um, <laughs> so it's like, and I'm like, I get all nervous, and I'm like, uh, it's like an irrational fear. So I'm like, I'm like, so Jason, like, <laughs> <laughs> you got it. No, but it's just, it's something interesting like that. Right. It's like, it's just you know, not being dependent on other people, understanding what your true skills are, what you can actually do, yeah. and if you can't do those things, how are you going to get yourself to right. be able to do those things? And a big part of it is. If you want something to be right, there's a big part of it where you just need to make it right. Yeah. Oftentimes we have this idea of glorified relationships. Like you're going to find the one and you're going to be pissing gold for the rest of your life. Obviously fucking not. And you know yeah, that, yeah. but you don't act that way. You're not going to find the one. You're going to make the one. Uh-huh. You make that relationship work. 100%. And you do that by working on yourself and honestly investing in that other person. Yeah. And that's why I think it's so blissful sometimes, sometimes, sometimes the idea of not really having a choice in who your partner is, because then you're forced into that relationship to make it work the right way. And that's why there's a lot of like you look at the divorce rates of couples that are in in forced marriages. And granted, there's too many factors for me to actually give a fucking good answer because there might be psychological damage there. I prefer free will. But there's a certain part of it that is blissful of like. We're in this. We got to make it work. It's like the boats are burned, essentially. Yeah. And when you have this, if you go into a relationship with the idea that you can put your hand on the eject button at any time, you're not yeah. going to be truly invested because that's not what investing is. Yeah. When you truly burn the boats and decide, I'm fucking investing, that's when your relationship is going to flourish. But when your finger is on the red button the whole time, knowing that, hey, maybe I don't like this person because of X, Y, and Z, or I can just back out at any time because I don't really need to invest in someone because there's a million other guys I can hit up because I could swipe on Tinder for a couple hours, then you're not investing anymore. And that's what's fucking up the relationship. That is what's fucking it up. And that's what fucked me up because I had this idea that I could just end it and I'll be fine. I'll, be, I, I, I'll move on, I'll be fine. And then I had enough time to realize like most of these other girls suck. And when I decided to actually try hard with Rachel, things were fucking amazing. 
when I realize that and internalize that, that's when I change my mind. But the only time things are actually going to work is when you decide to cut off the idea of doing anything else. That's why a marriage is so powerful. It's not the ring or the documentation from the government or whatever. It's the fact that I'm publicly announcing to everybody, I'm cutting off all alternatives. That's why it's way more powerful powerful for you to lose weight if you post on social media and say to everyone, I'm losing 100 pounds within the next 365 days. You're, mu- you're infinitely more likely to do that because when five o'clock hits and you know it's the only time for you to work out, you sit there and you have that social contract that's bound by only you, but it's bound. And you know that that's what's gonna get you out of bed. And sometimes that's what you need for a relationship. A big part of it is also choosing the right person that you're, you're bound to mesh with, that, that you're going to actually connect with well, that me- meshes with your personality well, for sure. But a huge part of it, I would argue half of it, is actually making that person the right person by investing truly and actually working on your that's own life. Why, that's why I think your whole list, Tony Robbins thing, is so powerful because it's like you almost, if, if you operate a, according to that list... Yeah. For the list that I'm talking about is this is listing all the qualities that you find in a relationship partner and like the non-negotiables, right? And it's like when you do that list and you really evaluate it with the person that you're getting into a relationship to, it's like when you sign that dotted line of being like, I am, I want to be in a relationship with you. And you have the yep. standard that high, right? Like we're going to be in a relationship and I'm going to make it fucking work, right? And so, it's like, obviously, you know, sometimes mistakes can happen, right? But they're, they're like 90, 90% out of the 100%. I'm going to make this work, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, or whatever, 99%, right? Like, of course, there's always a chance that it may not work out, right? And it's like, maybe I made the wrong choice. And, and stuff like that happens. But it's like, if you have that in your mind of like, I went through this entire process of having you be my girlfriend, mm-hmm. right? Like, <laughs> like I mean it. Like, th- I'm actually going to try to make this work. And all I'm right. going to go all in on it. 100%. And it's like, that definitely, like that kind of social contract aspect, I, especially when it comes to the weight. Right. Dropping weight example is such a big thing because you're announcing it on social media and it's like, it's like, oh my God, how am I going to look when it's like, there's no, there's no other options, right? Right. You don't have a choice, right? Right. You need to do it. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I think that's a big thing too. Cause I was thinking about it and it's like, it's interesting because are we actually all in on the business? No, obviously not. No. No. Okay. So well, what do you mean by all in? This is what I'm thinking because I intellectually I'm like, uh, yeah, we're all in like mm. no shit. Like, but I, I thought about it and I was like, do we actually treat it that way? No, but like, should we? I don't think a hundred percent we should. Okay. Like, okay. like, like, should I like, just, just a thought? That's all I have. Cause like, okay. So like to me, That's all like, in is like would result in you and I going out, going into debt and getting a house right now or an apartment selling cheap right now you have to quit your job i can't do the doordash job and we go all in because then it's going to force us to figure it the fuck out i don't think we need that stress to figure it out yes okay so gotcha but dude it would be awesome like it probably would but i Dad, I, come on. I but i do think i do think it's going to cause like i don't think we need to throw ourselves in the fire that hard mm. cuz we are throwing ourselves in the fire like an important distinction. There is a lot. There is a lot of stress in our lives because of this. Oh yeah, yeah. hypothetical. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stress. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stress. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, exactly. But it's gonna help us to become stronger people. You know, it's like we don't have really real problems. You right. know, like sure, stuff does come up, but it's like if I got in a car accident as opposed to I have to edit a hype reel tonight. <laughs> Which one's more of a real problem? Right. You know, it's like, and that's not even like you get into a car accident. Oh no, right? Like. You'll figure it out, right? right? And it's like that's still really bad, but it's like yeah. on that continual problems. Like, so no, I, I agree with that, and I think mm-hmm. sometimes I'm like, we're not doing enough. Like, I need to be feeling this pressure, and it's mm-hmm. like, do we really? Like, mm-hmm. no, you like you don't not necessarily need to not necessarily, that. but it's not yeah. always. But the other thing that I want to touch on briefly was, you know, when you talk about how, you know, basically burning the boats in terms of a relationship, that's a big reason why I think body count actually matters, like to an extent. Because, like, if I am not speaking, let's prerequisite this with this speech. I am not speaking from my high horse. I am speaking from my very low <laughs> horse in terms of um, my ability to coincide with this philosophy. With that said, that's why I think it's important. Because if you have all of this prior experience, 
it's going to be very hard for you to sit there and not think, well, this person had this trait and I really like that about him. And I really like this part about this guy. And I really like this part about this guy. And you have a hundred dudes that you can compare your, your next man to in a bunch of these different aspects and think, well, if he had this part and this part and this part, because you build yourself a psychological Superman that doesn't exist. And it prevents you from investing because grass is always greener in some aspect of their personality. And so it prevents you from truly investing because you sit in a spot where you think, well, if my guy was just a little more, if he was taller or if he was smarter or if he made more money or if he was nicer or if he was more athletic or whatever the fuck your, your things are, there's always going to be a guy that does it better in a certain aspect. And if you're waiting for Superman to come, you're going to be 40 years old with the cats. Don't do that to yourself.